Folks, what's going on? Heir of Carthage back, and yes, I've got some more action for you in Total War Rome 2. This time it is going to be uh, Kush taking on Parthia, so a couple of cool factions here that we don't see as often, and it should be a fun fight. Uh, Kush has a big line of swordsmen up front. There's five of them. Then they have four units <coughs> of Kushite archers, which are just kind of a light archer unit. And then there are, in terms of better infantry, there's a couple of units of Shotel warriors, and these guys have heavy armor piercing value. I believe it's like 12. Um, so a very high armor piercing uh, capability infantry. Only two of those. There's a couple of Nubian spearmen helping to guard the flanks. And then there's three units of Kushite royal guard, one of which includes the general. And then there are a couple of units of desert armored cavalry. And we're going to see it over here. This is a medium cavalry with decent armor values and, you know, pretty good against large. Uh, Parthia has four uh, Sarmatian horse archer mercenaries, and they are already firing on the uh, Kushite armies. And I like that the Nubian spearmen here being used to try and push them back and give the Kushite archers a chance to deal some damage back. And they do. They, they do get some damage done in return. Now, uh, the remainder of Parthia's army is going to be four Parthian foot archers. Uh, these guys have some pretty good damage here at 40 versus just the standard 35. Um, so these are dangerous foot archers. Um, where Parthia, though, is not great is infantry. However, I mean, the infantry for uh, Kush here is not amazing either. Like, these swords are very light units, um, so they're not going to be particularly good. There's uh, four hillmen, or sorry, three hillmen, one on this flank, two on this. And then in the back line, uh, there's going to be... It looks like four units of Parthian swords, and then there's a couple of Eastern cataphracts here. This is going to definitely be some of the real punching power. These guys are going to get hit. They're going to hit very hard on the charge. Um, however, something to remember in case people aren't familiar with it: if you ever played Rome One, the Parthian cataphracts had that alternate attack where you like did an alt click, and they would pull out a mace and have an armor-piercing melee. That is not the case with Royal and Eastern Cataphracts on the uh, on Rome 2. Would have been cool, but it isn't. So these units will hit hard on the charge. They will not want to stay in long-term melee uh, with the Kushite Royal Guard, uh, especially if the Royal Guard avoids the charge of the Cataphracts. Now, infantry taking a Cataphract charge unbraced will be devastating, especially the infantry that's on the field here. Uh, so Parthia really does rely quite a bit on its Cataphracts and missiles for damage because their infantry is pretty weak. Um, and of course their mobile missile contingent can be quite powerful here. Look, it's already destroyed a unit of swords and now it looks like they want a piece of these uh, Kushite archers. They're going to push in very close here and get some shots. They are taking some damage in return. This one unit is wavering. Um, definitely has a little worse for the wear here, but they're, they're also getting damage done. They've taken a unit of swords off the field. They've basically nullified this unit of archers. They've got these spearmen chasing them. I don't believe these spearmen uh, have precursor javelins. So, yeah, it's not something I think is part of their capability. We'll see. So, Kush is going to need to push forward and try to get an engagement going that is in their favor. Uh, they're going to have to be clever with their cavalry because, honestly, the Parthian foot archers are also going to rain death and destruction all over the Kush, um, so they're going to have to do something um, to, to get themselves into an advantageous situation. Uh, in, a, in a prolonged melee, I, I feel like the Kushite cavalry is going to be better. On the charge, the Parthian cavalry is better. Um, I don't know exactly how these Parthian swordsmen are going to perform. I mean, when you look at their stats, they're pretty mediocre. Uh, they don't have much armor piercing. They're not particularly good on the charge. They have decent armor. Um, you know, pretty normal health, that kind of thing. There's only four of them. Of course, I look at the Kushite swordsmen, and they're also really bad. The only units here that are going to be dangerous in melee are the Shotel warriors. And those could actually be good against the Cataphracts if they get stuck in a melee with them, because they do have so much armor-piercing capability. Looks like Parthia is going to fall back. Um, they don't really want the, the melee engagement too early. I don't blame them. Um, they probably want their foot archers to do more damage. Uh, someone actually commented on that the other day in the comments. They said, I don't understand why these players sit back and get shot so much. Rome 2 is kind of a different animal. And one thing you got to look at this nice counter charge with the armored cavalry to hold the hillmen and the royal cataphracts. Obviously looking to bring the Kushite royal guard to bear here. There's not any Parthian reinforcements near. The Cataphracts need to pull out of this, and they need to pull out now. 
looks like they're going to. So, good call to get the Cataphracts out of there. They'll take a little damage, though. The Kushite Royal Guard uh, Cavalry would have devastated these units. They're under fire by archers, and as I was about to say, um, why do players sit back and skirmish so much in Rome 2? Well, skirmishers don't cause their damage quite so quickly in this game as they do in, say, Total War Warhammer, where the damage done by skirmishers is a lot faster and a lot more apparent um, on, on what you're getting done. In this game, the skirmishing's a bit slower here. These cataphracts got a nice counter charge there. The Royal Guard, a little bit bunched up here, took that charge. However, that charge is now over, and there's a lot of support nearby for the Kush. Oof, yeah, I mean, that cataphract charge, though, you guys can see the impact of it. They have a really high charge bonus. The general here is in real trouble. However, this eastern cataphract is also in real trouble. They're now going to have to retreat, and they'll be pursued. So you can see the pursuit on there. Um, so there's a couple of factors. Like I said, one, the skirmishing takes longer. Two, the skirmishers, um, friendly fire is very real. So like right here where these Parthian foot archers are firing into the swordsmen, they're going to kill a lot of their own people. Friendly fire is very apparent in Rome too, um, and it will definitely cause you damage. Um, so that's why you see a lot of these players really try hard to get some value out of their skirmishers early. And typically when that was going on, there'd be a lot of feint and, you know, stuff from from cavalry to try and get in and take out some skirmishers and force the other player into a poor early engagement. Um, also, whenever a real battle gets underway, you have to start protecting your archers, moving them around to fire. And the movement in this game is a little slower, again, than Warhammer. And so it's just a little bit different. The Shotel Warriors got a nice charge here. Looks like this one's trying to cycle charge. They do get a nice charge bonus. And look over here, that Kush Royal, or Kushite Royal Guard, um, they are absolutely slapping the Cataphracts in a prolonged melee. That Royal Cataphract is not long for this world. There's another Cataphract nearby that looks like it was going to give charge. There's another one here as well. So despite the uh, Royal Guard Cavalry getting rid of a couple of Cataphract units, or at least mostly, the Royal Cataphracts are still here. There are still other Cataphracts nearby, but some nice intercepts here. The Shotel Warriors blocking the Cataphract Charge as well, and they may have been trying to get to the Kushite Archers. The Sarmatian Horse Archers, I don't know if they're out of ammunition, but they're being kind of doggedly pursued by those Spearmen. And then the Parthian Foot Archers are mostly still intact, but they are in big trouble. So this, again, earlier I mentioned why they try and get their skirmishing done early, because when a battle breaks out and things start getting crazy, you lose track of things, so like this swordsman here is trying really hard to stop this Royal Guard Cavalry, and they get very lucky to manage to do so. These uh, foot archers probably should have turned their fire on that cavalry as well. Um, but that uh, hillman is, or sorry, I said swordsman, that hillman is paying a dear price because they're being killed as a result. And this Kushite Royal Guard Cavalry now is going to start killing archers by the dozens. Um, however, there is Eastern Cataphracts that's going to come clean it up, but getting rid of these archers is going to deal possibly a death blow uh, to Parthia here because, they're, again, their skirmishers are where they get their damage done, uh, at least one of the sources. So the Royal Guard, or sorry, the Royal Cataphracts are now gone. The Parthian Swordsmen are holding their own just fine uh, in a prolonged melee against the uh, forces of Kush. Um, but the Kushite Archers are still alive. They're still firing. Looks like they're using Rapid Reload at this point, and they're dumping fire into these Eastern Cataphracts. It's a very good target for them. They're larger targets, and a little bit easier for the archers to hit while they're in that melee scrum. So when I'm looking at this, it's definitely looking in favor of Kush, because Parthia has lost their general. A lot of their units aren't disciplined. Um, I think these swordsmen are when we're looking at them, but other units are not, like the hillmen, the archers, the, the horse archers. Um, so they're going to be struggling a bit uh, to hold their armies together. Um, the skirmishers really got shredded by that Kushite uh, Royal Guard Cavalry. They got into the Parthian Foot Archers. That was a devastating blow to Parthia, and probably one that sealed the battle. See these Kushite Archers here just firing away and really getting some nice value. That Kushite Slave Spearman being used to try and block that Parthian Sword Charge there. We can see here that the remnants of this Horse Archer is probably out of ammunition at this point. Um, you know, not able to do much against these heavy Royal Guard cavalry. Um, Parthia's infantry, though, performed pretty well here, as I kind of expected it would, except for against maybe Chotel warriors. Um, you know, these are these are tough units, um, comparatively speaking, right? They're not good in a grind out against real sword-bearing factions, but, you know, against one of these desert factions, the Parthian swordsmen can probably hold their own to a degree, depending on what they're up against. Um... 
I don't think they would do so well against, say, like Desert Legionaries or something like that. But again, in this case, they're going to do all right. Um, but it's it's too little, too late. Um, Parthia is just not going to be able to hold this army together. And I think that the Kush just kind of have to play their cards right. There's a fair few units sitting around, but I, I think it's partly because you're about to see a chain route. Um, these archers are actually out of ammunition. They're going to charge in and just help fix that Parthian sword. There's another one chasing these archers over here, and if the one ran out of ammunition, the others are probably close to running out as well. Um, Kush is still trying to play their cards right here because they don't want these swordsmen to grind them out. Um, they do have a couple of cavalry units that can deliver some charges, which of course is going to impact leadership. You can see there the leadership immediately dropping uh, for those two Parthian swordsmen as they get contacted by the charge. And there's the army losses and the route that I said was likely inevitable. Um, so it was a costly victory for Kush, but well played on both sides. I think that it was tricky here. The way that um, that Sol Invictus brought his Kush cavalry here was, was going to make things difficult for the Cataphracts. Um, the Cataphracts are just absolutely devastating on the charge, but they've got to have a way to fall back and retreat and continue their charge. So that means they're going to need some close infantry support. Or they're going to need the support of like a medium uh, melee cavalry or even some light cavalry. And all of that money was spent on the Sarmatian horse, horse archers, which of course did some very nice damage early. But in reality, their target probably really needed to be the cavalry. Now, of course, you know, Sol was never going to try and make that easy uh, for Massa Max here, who he was playing. Um, but definitely, I mean, if, if he would have been able to impact, you know, even just these armored desert cavalry, it would have really helped his cataphract survive until late in that game. And of course, if the cataphract survived till late in the game, that's a win for Parthia as well. Um, so it was an interesting battle. It was a fun one. It didn't work out for Parthia here. Kush, I think, came pretty well prepared. These heavy melee cavalry, I think, were a good choice. Basically, if you can disrupt a charge or two and then just dog the cataphracts, don't let them retreat, you're going to be in pretty good condition. Would have been interesting to see those mercenary Sarmatian horse archers stick really close to the cataphracts and pour fire into any melee cavalry that's attacking them um, and try and create some issues that way because honestly the Parthian foot archers could have held their own I think against the Kushite archers um, in just a standoff skirmish and if those horse archers would have played closely with the cataphracts could have been a very dangerous situation potentially. Uh, but then again this is me talking you know from the outside looking in. I'm not the one playing the battle. It may be a lot harder, so I'm just giving you uh, my two cents. But well played by both players. Appreciate Soul sending this one over so that you all can continue to enjoy some Rome 2 action. And I do hope that it is making your holidays nice. Anyway, Air of Carthage signing out for now. I'll see you soon with some more action in Total War Rome 2.